The Weird Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the Weird Circle. Speak again the immortal tale, Expectations of an Heir. Yes, there she goes, my beloved Aunt Mora, her skirts rustling as she waddles up the stairs to her room. My earliest memories are memories of her, always dressed in the same way, heavy dark dresses which only accentuate her huge body, her fat body, always waddling from our dark living room up a circular wooden stairway to a room on the second floor, leaving behind a faint scent of mimosa perfume mixed with the sweet odor of rice powder and the dusty smell of old clothes. Aunt Mora. Mother, father, brother, and sister. All these she has been to me. My only relative, Aunt Mora. There's always been just two of us. Alone. Alone together. And the butler, Andrew. Only he leaves us alone together, too. Everybody does. You see, we're so devoted to each other. They say... They say a lot of things. Wealthy Aunt Mora and that sweet nephew of hers... So devoted, so devoted. So devoted a man he is. It's amazing the way those two are always together. I don't see anything amazing about it. She's devoted her life to him. After all, she's all he's got. And he's her favorite brother's child. But cooping a young man up like that, it isn't natural. Someday he'll find a woman and get married. Do you mark my words? Ralph Weston, Mary. Nonsense. Maybe he might have a long time ago, that Alice Godwin, but not now. Not after what happened. Besides, you know what people say. There might not be a word of truth in it, but you know the way people talk. Yes, they talk. And I've given them much meat for conversation. I wonder if they know the truth, the real truth. Could they have guessed? It was for you, Alice, that I did it. It was all for you, Alice. I loved you. I loved you a great deal. We had been for a walk that afternoon so long ago when we were engaged to be married. You stopped suddenly by the banks of the river and you looked at me, almost appraising. You're a strange boy, Ralph. We've been engaged five months now and I've never even met your family. I haven't got a family. Well, you have an aunt. Alice, when the time is ripe, you'll meet her. When the time is ripe. I'm so tired of being secretly engaged. It's all so pointless. Why can't I announce my engagement like other girls? Are you ashamed of me? Ashamed of you? Great Scott, no. Well, why keep it a secret then? Even my family are becoming suspicious. Stall them a while. Say that, that you're not sure you love me. That's... That's rather close to the truth, Ralph. What do you mean? I mean, I'm not at all sure anymore that I want to marry you. You've no gumption. You won't get a job and start out on your own like other people. A little foolish for me to take a job as a $20 a week clerk and... There's not very much else I'm suited for. But living on your aunt this way... I'm not living on her, really, Alice. It's my money. She's going to leave it all to me someday. Someday isn't now. Aunt Mora doesn't approve of my marrying. You know that. Do I? I don't know anything. Do you want me to be cut off without a cent, Alice? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'd love it. Give you a chance to prove yourself. You're not being very practical. Have you ever asked your aunt, point blank, how she feels about your marrying? Well, no, because I... 
I know what her reaction would be. You're making her seem an awful ogre. When everyone says she's so devoted to you. Such a nice person. I know Aunt Mora better than you, Alice. You'll have to let me... Let me do things in my own way. Aunt Mora's got a bad heart, and any kind of a shock would prove fatal to her. But why should your engagement prove a shock? Oh, Ralph, we've had this argument so many times. I'm sorry, darling, but unless you feel free to marry me now... Alice, I'd... give me a little time. I wish I didn't love you. Alice, I'll tell Aunt Mora tonight. Oh, I'm sure she'll understand, Ralph. I'm positive she will. That is, if she's as devoted as people say. Devoted. 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 I went home. Tried to plan how best to break the news. After dinner, Aunt Mora and I were in the living room. The air was heavy with the rich, fat odors and the most of perfume and rice powder. We sat in silence facing each other. And then she glanced at the clock on the wall and started toward the dark hallway. She was just about to walk up the stairs to her room when... Good night, Ralphie. Don't forget to lock the windows. You forgot last night. Auntie. Yes, Ralph? I've got to talk to you. I, I was wondering if... If what? I can't talk to you this way in a dark hallway with you peering down at me. What I have to say is rather confidential. Can't it wait till morning? I guess it could, only it's rather important. Sounds like a matter of state. I hate to mention... You hate to what? Approach the subject of money again. Heaven knows you've been generous enough. Gambling debts again, Ralph? Well, that isn't all. Another woman? Don't say another woman in that tone, Andy. It, it's not fair. Do come in the living room and, and sit down. Oh. All right. Straighten your coat, Ralph. Your clothes always look like you've slept in them. Stop picking on me. I'm not picking on you, dear. Now, here we are in the living room. What did you want to say? Mind if I light a candle? Or is that a waste of candle wax? Ralph, I've never minded how much candle wax you use. I've never said anything about it now, have I? You looked it. I think you interpret my looks to mean something they don't mean. You interpret so much into everything. If you're going to dissect me, we'll get nowhere. What did you drag me down here for? I want to get married. Who is my future niece to be? Alice Godwin. Alice Godwin. I used to know her mother. If she's anything like her mother, she's a sweet girl. She's a lovely girl and she loves me. I didn't even know you knew her. Don't know everything about me. I never supposed I did. Well? Well? <laughs> Congratulations. What? What are we going to live on? I mean, money, Aunt Mora. I had supposed that the miracle of love had worked a miracle in your ambitions. I see I'm wrong. I offered to help you get a job two years ago. There was one that paid a good salary. You know I'm not well at... At least not well enough to take a job. My lungs. Nonsense. Your lungs. The doctor examined you last month and said you were in the best of health. The doctor, the doctor. I, I know how I feel. Oh, Aunt Mora, you're, you're going to leave me your money. Why don't you give me enough to live on now? Because you are not capable of handling your own finances, Ralph, dear. Be sensible. Sensible? Yes. All you have to do is take a look at the record of the way you've handled money in the past. Ridiculous gambling debts. I was young. You said six months ago you were young. And now I'm to believe that you've grown up. But... Uh, and the women. You've spent a fortune on women. It's natural for a young man about town to... Waste to... hard-earned money? No, my dear. If you find a job and prove to me that you've changed, I might reconsider. But as it is, you'll not have a cent from me until the day I die. Auntie... Ralph. You're closer to me than any child of my own could be. I'm only doing it for your own good. Dear, you know as well as I do, I'm devoted to you. Devoted. Devoted to me. Devoted in her own peculiar way. She climbed up the stairs to her room and left me alone in the sitting room with my thoughts. And my thoughts weren't pretty ones, not where she was concerned. 
She was determined to hang on to her money until she died. Death. Yes, perhaps her sudden death would be the answer. She'd lived her life. Obviously, what good was a rich, fat old woman? Death would put a stop to all this bickering over my extravagances. Then I could marry. The scent of mimosa perfume was heavy in the air, and the sweet odor of rice powder burned my nostrils almost as if she were there. But she was upstairs, and I was alone, alone with my thoughts of her death. But how? That was the problem. Accidental death, immediate, painless. The stairs. A bad fall from the stairs. A, a broken step, the second to the top. That was it. The shock of the fall was certain to bring on another heart attack. I knew I had the right idea, the second step. I had no sooner thought of it than I started to work to the kitchen for a chisel, a, a bit of wax. I had hoped Andrews, the butler, was in bed. But as I opened the door to the kitchen... Mr. Rouser, are you still up? Why, why, yes, Andrews. Is there something I can do for you, sir? No, I... I just thought I'd rummage about the ice chest and get myself something to eat. I wasn't eavesdropping, Mr. Ralph, but I happened to hear you tell your auntie you were engaged. My congratulations, Mr. Ralph. Thank you, Andrews. Are you sure there's nothing I can get you? Positive, I... I like to rummage a nice chest by myself. You're positive, sir. Yes, positive. Go up to bed, Andrews. If you, if you won't be needing me, sir, I, I don't suppose you would mind if I took the rest of the evening off? No, Andrews, I, I don't mind at all. You don't have to come in till morning if you wish. Well, I was going to be a wee bit late, sir. That is, if you don't mind. I don't mind. If your auntie asks for me, you'll tell her a likely story, won't you? My aunt is sound asleep, Andrews. And she won't be needing you. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, good night to you, sir. Good night, Andrews. That was good luck. First part was good luck, Andrews taking the night off. I knew I wouldn't be disturbed. I went to the tool drawer beneath the sink, opened it, took out the chisel, the hammer, and the floor wax, carefully wrapped them in a towel. Grandfather's clock in the hall was chiming. Aunt Mora always fell asleep within ten minutes after retiring. She was proud of that fact, talked about it a great deal. She usually went to bed at nine, but here it was ten, ten o'clock. I crept from the kitchen, then shut the door carefully behind me. Then I crept slowly, carefully up the stairs, one at a time, very slowly, very carefully, until I reached the second from the top of that long wooden stairway. I sat down on the steps, carefully removed the small nails which held the rug in place. Carefully, soundlessly, one by one, I removed the nails, nails for her coffin. Perhaps I ought to save them. The thought amused me. I was so careful I had time to be amused, amused and anxious too. Then when the last nail was out, I pulled up the carpet and waxed the stair underneath, waxed it well. Very well, until the carpet slid at the merest touch. Then, as I started to hammer just one nail to hold the carpet temporarily... Ralph? Ralph? Uh, uh, oh, yes, Andy. I thought I heard you out there. What are you doing on that stairway? Uh, uh, stairway? Why, nothing, Aunt Moore. I, I was just coming up to bed. Ralph, uh, could you do something for me? I don't feel so well, darling. Your heart again, Aunt Mora? Yes, I, I'm afraid so. Would you get me my pills and a glass of water? Of course, Andy. I, I do anything for you. Anything. You're so devoted, aren't you, dear? So devoted. the stairway and got Aunt Mora's pills in water. 
Had she seen me fix the stair, had she guessed, nobody knew what went on in that mind of hers. It was almost midnight as I entered her room. I opened the door and walked to her bedside. Thanks, Ralph. That's all right. Anything else you want before I go to bed? Nothing. These attacks don't mean a thing. Funny I couldn't sleep tonight. Haven't you been asleep at all? I must have dozed. But I kept dreaming. Very uncomfortable. Dreaming of what? I can't remember. Except that it was unpleasant. You ate a large dinner tonight. You you always have nightmares when you overeat. You know that. Yes, of course. Only it was so strange. What's so strange? To dream that you were trying to murder me. Yes, that is strange. Good night, Ralph. Good night, Aunt Mora. I hope you don't have any more unpleasant dreams. I hope not. I don't like unpleasantness of any kind. My heart won't stand it. How much did she know then? That's what I keep thinking even now. How much had she guessed? I went to bed and tried to sleep, but my heart pounded with excitement. I laid awake a long time thinking of tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow Aunt Mora must be dead. Tomorrow. Then morning came. Tomorrow finally came. I dressed hurriedly. My hands were trembling with excitement. I wanted to be downstairs before she awoke. And then I could wait down there and watch her fall. Watch her die. I could enjoy my freedom. My freedom. I walked down the stairs, careful not to step on the wax second step. Andrews, the butler, was in the dining room, setting the table when I came in. Good morning, Mr. Ralph. Oh, good morning, Andrews. Where's the morning paper? Oh, sorry, sir, I'll get it for you. Will you have your eggs three or four minutes this morning? It doesn't matter. By the way, sir, I didn't know you were interested in carpentry work, sir. Who's interested in carpentry work? You were working with a hammer and a chisel last night. I only mentioned it because... Because of what? Because you've disarranged the carpenter drawer with all those old nails you threw in there. Nails? I, I haven't been near the drawer. Oh, you must have, sir. The drawer was in perfect order last night before I went out. Was it? And we haven't had a carpet nail in the house for months. That is until the mor this morning. There's quite a little stack of them now. Oh, I... I'll get you your paper now, sir. And my eggs? Certainly, sir. I'll get it, Andrews. Yes, sir. Confounded nothing but peddlers at this hour of the morning. Coming! Hello, Ralph. Alice. Alice, what are you doing here? I... I had to see you, darling. Well, come in. Thank you. Have you had breakfast yet? Yes, I, I have. Will you have a cup of coffee with me? Well, if you want me to, of course I... I you're as nervous as a cat, Alice. What in the world is the matter with you? I haven't slept all night. Sit down here. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you in the middle of your breakfast. Here are your eggs, sir. Uh, Miss Gardner would like a cup of coffee, Andrews. Would you like some eggs, dear? No, thanks, Andrews. Yes, ma'am. Well, darling, what is it you wanted to tell me? I... Uh, did you... Did you tell your Aunt Mora? About our engagement? Is that what you came here for? Yes. Did you tell her? Yes. Well, what did she say? Nothing. She went directly to bed. She didn't feel well. Then she doesn't approve. Evidently not. I'm glad, Ralph. Glad? That's a strange thing to say. All night last night, I couldn't sleep. I wanted to come over and give you this. That's why I came this morning. Take your ring, Ralph. You're joking. No. No, I'm quite serious. I've known for a long time. This is all a mistake. Alice, darling, I... Your coffee, miss. Thank you. Uh, that'll be all, Andrews. Yes, sir. Why have you changed your mind, Alice? I suppose you are entitled to an explanation. I certainly think I am. Well, mostly it's because... because I suddenly realized I don't love you. I must have known that all along. Love can only stand so much of being hurt. I hurt you? Without knowing it. Yes, you did. Oh, how can I explain to you? You don't I... need to. I... Not if you don't want to. 
Oh, Ralph, I suddenly realized I was waiting for somebody that didn't exist. I was waiting for a you that never lived. And the you that does exist doesn't think enough of me to fight for me. Knowing that, Ralph, I can't go on. Please, take this. All right. But you'll change your mind someday, Alice. You, you'll come back to me. Maybe. But I doubt it. No, don't see me at the door. I, I can go myself. Goodbye, Ralph. Andrews! Andrews! Yes, sir? Where's the morning paper? The young lady's left, sir. If she isn't here, it's normal to presume that she's left. Yes, sir, I get your paper for you, sir. And then you can take the day off, Andrews. Oh, thank you, sir, but I... Uh, your aunt has asked me to go on an errand for her. Well, then do your errand and, and then take the day off. Aren't you interested in the errand, sir? You usually take such interest in these things. Aren't you forgetting yourself a little, Andrews? I don't think so, sir. I don't think so at all. I, I mean, after finding all those carpet nails in the carpentry box. What are you hinting at? Your aunt has asked me to go to her lawyer this morning and ask him to drop over. Why? I don't know, sir. It's unfortunate about lawyers. They, they can never come right over, no matter how badly one needs them. Can't they? Oh, no, sir. It'll take at least three hours. Andrews. We'll be back at noon, sir. Andrews. At noon, sir. At noon. And he knew. But the man was a fool. If Aunt Mora were to die accidentally, I could manage him. In a short time, I could replace the carpet nails, scrape the wax off, and, and no one would take his word, a butler's word, against mine. I left the dining room and, and walked up the stairs. Carefully up the stairs. Careful of the second stair to Aunt Mora's room. I... I stood outside the door for a moment, and then I knocked on the door. Come in, Ralph. Good morning, Auntie. Good morning, Ralph. Would you take my tray? Certainly, darling. Aren't you feeling well this morning? Not very well, Ralph. It's my heart started acting up last night. Here, here, let me take your tray. Then you can stretch out. Thank you, dear. <coughs> Ralph. Oh, Auntie. Uh, my heart... Oh. I think you'd better go for the doctor. Aunt Mora. Ralph, please. Get the doctor. The doctor. Of course, Aunt Mora. I, I'll go right away. I'll be right back, Auntie. I'll be right back with the doctor. Ralph, be careful of the stairs. Ralph, be careful of the stairs. Ah! Be careful of the stairs. Be careful of the stairs. Careful, careful. And then that horrible falling sensation as I plunged headlong down the circular stairway. It overwhelms me and blots out any sane or sensible thinking. I'm alive, yes, alive. But the mental pictures that haunt the inner recesses of my mind race by. Pictures of myself lying in a hospital cot and hearing Alice Godwin's voice from miles away. How badly is he hurt, Doctor? We can't tell yet, Miss Godwin. Compound skull fracture and some rather serious damage to the spinal column. We'll know much more in another week or so. He said another week or so, week or so, week or so, week or so. Oh, hello, Mora. Come in. Well, you're looking a lot better. I'm feeling fit. How is my nephew, Doctor? Any improvement? Well, we can't be sure as yet. A case like this takes time, you know. Time, you know. Time, you know. Time, you know. Time, time. Months and months, and then I was home again. Home again. Welcome home, Mr. Ralph. Thank you, Andrews. Ralph, darling. Here, let me help you. You'll learn to push the wheelchair by yourself later on. But right at present, you'd better let us do the work. Thank you, Aunt Mora. I'll push him, ma'am. You needn't worry, sir. We'll take care of you. Good care of you. Yes. I know you will, Andrews. Here. Here's the morning paper. You can read it while I get dressed. We didn't expect you home from the hospital so soon. The doctor thought you'd be there another month. Yes, I know, Aunt Mora. I know. They were going to try another treatment. The specialists seem to feel it's hopeless. I'll never walk again. Nothing's hopeless, Ralph. Nothing in the world. 
especially if there are people around who are as devoted to you as I am. Simply devoted, my dear. Yes, there she goes. My beloved Aunt Mora. My beloved Aunt Mora. Her skirts rustling as she waddles upstairs to her room. Devoted Aunt Mora. Devoted Aunt Mora. Devoted Aunt Mora. <laughs> From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought to you the story, Expectations of an Heir. Bellkeepers!